Hello and welcome to Bharatshakti dot in. I'm Brigadier Chatterjee. We're going to be talking about certain force multipliers which are utilized by countries in their application of air power in the skies. Uh, now, as far as this force multipliers are concerned, well, you're going to utilize them for uh, the safety of millions of dollar worth aircraft, fighter aircraft up in the sky, just to ensure that they're used optimized. Now, what are these force multipliers and how are they utilized? That's what is the discussion today. And to carry us through this discussion, I have with me Air Commodore S.P. Singh. Air Commodore S.P. Singh has about 3,000 hours of flying uh, experience in the Air Force. He's at the moment with the Center for Air Power Studies uh, in Delhi. Yeah, welcome, Air Commodore. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Brigadier Chatterjee. It's always a pleasure to be here interacting with you and talking to our audience. Right. I was going to ask you a couple of questions about the uh, so AWS systems, huh? uh, airborne early warning systems, and AWACS, airborne warning and control system. Firstly, if there is a slight difference between the two, we could explain it to our viewers. As also, uh, what is their utilization, what is their function, uh, to get us all on the same page, basically. Absolutely. That is natural. And I must start with what you said. These are the force multipliers. You know, uh, in the battlefield today, the way battle has uh, grown over the years, and the air battle, you require force multipliers. But everything only the fighter, only the transport aircraft cannot do. They need support systems in the air. Now, these force multipliers are various categories, which includes AVAX and AWC, as you brought out, and also air-to-air -air fuelers and some other satellite-prone systems. Now, the AVAX and AW. First of all, let's see, these are called the radars in the air. Normally, when you have the ground radars, they have huge limitation in terms of their reach because the Earth's curvature and the distance available, they are not able to detect the incoming enemy aircrafts, and it is late for our fighters to go and counter them. So, to make sure that our we have a reach and transparency looking well into the enemy territory depth, we need some radars which are high up in the air, and the Earth's curvature is over part. And these are the two radars. The subtle difference between these two is that AVAX is a full fledged airborne warning control system in the air, is a full fledged integrated air command post in the air. It can, make, can carry out all the functions of the ground ADDC, Air Defense Direction Center. That is, it is to detect the incoming raid, it can support the R offensive operation, defensive operations, guide the fighters to go and attack the incoming strike, air defense fighter as also give them the warning on various issues, control multiple missions simultaneously. On the airborne platform, it is a huge transport aircar, which has got a radar mounted on itself and it is aerodynamically designed so that there is no drag on the aircar and then you can function all this. Now, this AVAX which I am talking about, on station, inside working station are more than about 8 to 10, where large number of controllers are sitting there, there are electronic jamming equipment available on board. And it can do alien function also, electronic intelligence function also, multiple function it can do and simultaneously with these so many controllers. Now, ANWC is kind of a shorter form of it, does a similar role, but it has got a limit in terms of the uh, reach, in terms of distance, and it also the workstation on board. It could be just two or three. So, it does a kind of gap uh, filling arrangement for the AVAX. So, it can be substituted like whenever AVAX is not available, you use ANWC at least has some coverage. Another difference in both of them is AVAX has got an all-round coverage, 360 coverage can scan and the radar is designed like that. Whereas in ANWC, most of the aircars have got the aligned antenna to the fuselage. So, they what they do is what is known as sector scan. So, they can do 120 degree in rear front quarter and about 120 degree in the rear. So, about 240 degree. Now, if you want to do full scan, the aircar has to keep maneuvering to continue monitoring the entire. So, there will be certain area which are called dark areas or which are blind areas to the radar. Whereas in AVAX, other than right below the AVAX, there is no dark area. The distance they can pick up is AVAX can go up to about 400 to 500 kilometers and ANWC are generally of the range of about 300 kilometers or lesser. So, these are the major subtle differences. The utilization as I covered, large number of missions can be done in front the maritime strike, interdiction strikes, air defense mission, the search and rescue in the or the any combat SCR mission going, it can be supported, it can be guided of any incoming attack on them. They can be guided well in time, air defense fighters can be directed to go and shoot down the enemy incoming, whole lot of functions can be done by the same 
platform with the controllers on board. These are the major uh, issues. Yeah, Commodore, you talked about the Air Defense Direction Center and how these uh, stations on top uh, by AWACS or AWS, AWES, sorry, uh, how they perform certain functions which was done by the Air Defense Direction Center. Uh, do you mean to say that the Air Defense Direction Center has now become irrelevant? It is not there uh, at all? Or is it being still continued? With? No, absolutely. They are very much required. See, Air Defense Direction Center is a whole array of radars on ground. They are tactically placed so as to give a gap-free coverage from the uh, border side. But the limitation they have is because of the Earth's curvature, they can look up to a certain depth. Second thing is, uh, the AVAX when it is airborne, it is a highly vulnerable platform in the air. It can be shot down by the enemy incoming raid if it is not able to protect itself. It is a slow moving platform and the fighters incoming are very high speed. They carry, today they carry the range, missiles of the danger of 100 km plus. So they can launch missile and uh, uh, cause their damage to the airborne platform. So that the moment we see a fighter aircraft coming in from enemy side, the AVAX or AW aircraft has to keep moving inwards to keep itself safe and maybe sometime forced to land back to keep itself safe. So then that area will become blind. So on ground control radars have to take over. So, so it's it a layered is, kind of a Absolutely, it's a layered defense where the ground radars cannot be uh, totally ignored. They will continue to function. Okay. And sometime due to let's say weather, AVAX is not able to get a bond. Or because of other reasons, there is some kind of jamming takes place not able to do. So under our reason and otherwise from AVAX, the entire picture can be transferred to air defense direction center. Once the AVAX has given the initial warning and done the control, the ADDC will take over. The radars will take over. The entire thing will continue till the enemy aircraft is shot down. So that is the kind of uh, difference. They will continue to remain. And this whole system is now into ISCCS, Integrated Air Command Controller Center, which is being functional in the Air Force. Uh, give us an idea. Uh, a Commodore, about the systems that are available with the Indian Air Force, uh, both of them, I'm talking about the early warning system and also the AVAX, the full-fledged system that you're talking about. So in India, uh, for the Indian Air Force, we have two types of uh, airborne systems, uh, warning control system. One is the uh, A50 platform, which is from the Russian IL-76 based, modified by Falcon of the Falcon radar of the Israel. So it's a combination by the Russian platform with the Falcon radar of Israel. That is A50 platform, which is like a AVAX to us. There are three of them with us. As per open source information, we have three of them. And similarly, DRDO has developed on the Embraer platform, Embraer platform with a horizontal aligned antenna with the fuselage. That is on the Embraer, it's called Netra. So we have three, three of them, which as of today is just about sufficient for the western and northern border to give the coverage. But it cannot give continuous coverage because the total time in the air each AVAX or ANW will have about 8 to 6 hours without refueling. And so they, they are vulnerable, they, that is all the time they can be used for. So if one of them is in terms so of VA, practically serviceable will be about 4 to 5, which are used. Now this, these are the two platforms that we have. And now with the Indian Ocean region become an area of contest, as we are all aware of, of with the Indo-Pacific, we need much more than us to give the coverage uh, over the Indian Ocean region also, as also the, on the China border towards the eastern side. So there is a need to have much more radars than what we have today. Right. Uh, give us a, uh, let's take stock at least a little bit about, uh, in very broad parameters, about what do the Chinese have, what do the Pakistanis have, and yeah. how does it really comparatively is, look like? That is what, but natural that, you know, uh, people like to know as to what are our adversary have. Now, as we see, as we talk about the major adversary today is China, and they have huge number of ACARs on all types of fleets, including the AVAX and AWC. See, the major ACAR that they have is the KJ2000, which are limited. There are four of them, but they are sufficient for them for the task they have. Because in addition, they have close to 20 KJ500 and KJ200, which is almost about 24 total airborne platforms they have to give the coverage. Now, if it is only against India, they have to cover in the battle. Uh, the number is so much that at 24 hours the aircraft can be airborne, available. So they can do continuous coverage, which we will not be able to do it with the strength that we have. And they are also developing now Y20, on the Y20 aircraft, which is an airlift aircraft, they are de developing the ANWC aircraft on that also. So in coming time, their number will keep increasing, and they will have. So both for the northern and eastern border for our uh, coverage, opposite us, there is large number aircraft. 
secondly coming to pakistan pakistan has almost similar numbers that we have but they their things are both are procured that means they have the uh, sab 2000 that area is sab 2000 that platform to have they are three of them both are awc and the, then they have the chinese uh, supported is that dk 03 three of them so the total they have about 6 to 7 acres available which are covering only the our western border so as far as they are concerned for them once again only to cover one side of border and this such number 7 is well sufficient for them so that's all. so these are the two competitive and as far as we are concerned we need to step up procurement quickly on this area to cover as a cover the larger areas of interest that we have no with the number of freight crafts that the chinese have you, uh, you have actually preempted my next question but i was going to ask you that was the kind of uh, range loss that the chinese would you know uh, suffer because the crafts uh, will be taking off from much higher altitudes yeah. in tibet see actually they need not operate all the acres from the uh, foothills of himalayan region and all they need not where these acres have a long endurance and long range they can fly for 8 hours or 4000 miles and they can do the fueling so they can get away from the depth they feel from the planes come to the close area do a refueling and continue remaining in the air that is one one option with them second is even if they get away from the uh, closer hills the in this particular acre the loss is not much because the whatever the weight of the acre is there minimum that they'll take on with, with that and they keep operating less fuel but once you get away they can start refueling again and operate so the limitation in terms of the uh load is not there so much on them because they have to operate from higher fields because they can get even from depth field the other limitation they will have is the safety of the airbags because we have large more airfields in the punjab and uh, northern sector where we can launch a counter strike to the airbags and with brahmos available with us the threat to their airbags is much higher so they will have to keep moving faster into the depth airfield that is the kind of threat they face so their coverage can be curtailed by our acre uh, fighter acres in the air right one last question uh, we have a dearth of resources in any case that's very obvious i think when you give this numbers out to of the chinese and the pakistanis there's obviously a huge dearth of resources now what's there in the pipeline is there anything at all there in the pipeline absolutely see there are uh, efforts uh, by the government and the air force and to procure more of these platforms we wanted to develop more netras but unfortunately the embraer platform itself is now out of service there there is no more netras so embraer is not available so there is no more embraer can be done the trials by the drdo and nnl are on for various other platforms now recently for the boeing the trials are there and if we succeed in the boeing trial that will be a game changer but then we have we have huge number of boeings coming which are available and the coverage is like e3c century which is the best avax in the uh, world which is operated by the us so we can reach that say but the trials are still on it is under development uh, there, was new, there was a news item that used boeings of the indian f indian uh, airlines. airlines absolutely are going absolutely. to be made available absolutely absolutely that is the idea idea is that those airlines now the tata is now taking the new acar the older uh, boeing air can be used by the air force and the best utilization once they succeed in a trial a large number of we will have the avax and all then once you have a successful trial there the number is not a problem okay then we'll have a large one and then we'll have avax better than the aw that we have today right uh, i think we'll end on that note uh, and thank you a yeah, comrade thank you so much for sparing your time and joining us thank you so much always a pleasure and thank you so much sir and thank you viewers thanks for joining us on bharat shakti dot in do spend some time with us now and then then you will find such interesting stories thank you